Hello students. So, hello students. Today I am going to discuss uh, pipelining. So, this is uh, the last part in your module 5. So, in this chapter, as I am going to discuss uh, the pipelining as a means of for executing the machine instructions concurrently, then various hazards that cause the performance degradation in pipeline processors and the means for mitigating their effect, then hardware and software implications of the pipelining, uh, influence of pipelining on the instruction set design and superscalar processors. And the same concept that you are going to discuss in detail in your uh, seventh semester, that is as a part of. Uh, advanced computer architectures right so first let me discuss the basic concepts here as you already know uh, the speed of execution of programs is influenced by many factors so one way to improve the performance is to use the pasta circuit technology to build the processor and the main memory so another possibility is to arrange the hardware so that more than one operation can be performed at the same time so in this way the number of operations performed per second is increased even though the elapsed time needed to perform any one operation is not changed so here uh, basically pipelining is a particularly uh, effective way of organizing the concurrent activity in a computer system the basic idea is very simple here it is frequently encountered in uh, manufacturing plants where uh, pipelining is commonly known as the assembly line operation. Here the readers are unbounded familiar with the assembly line used in a car manufacturing. So in this chapter the first station in an assembly line may prepare the chassis of a car and the next station adds the body then next one install the engine and so on like this the pipelining work it is something like uh, the sequential execution we can say now consider how the idea of pipelining can be used in a computer here the processor executes a program by patching and executing the instructions one after other let f i and e i refer to the patch and execute steps for the instruction i i consider instruction i f is a patch step and e is the execution step for an instruction here execution of program consists of a sequence of patch and execute steps which is shown in this uh, particular figure here you can see the sequential steps of a patch and execution here i1 i2 i3 are the instructions f is the execution step e represent the f represent the patch e represent the execution step right so the execution of a program it consists of both patch and execute steps Now consider a computer that has two separate hardware units, uh, one unit for fetching the instruction and other unit for executing them which is shown in this particular figure. Here you can see the hardware organization for fetching and executing the instruction. This is what the hardware organization. So instruction patch unit and this is the execution unit. This is what some uh, interstage buffer you can say means uh, here first the instruction is fetched and uh, it will be stored in some buffer that is what some intermediate step you can say then it will be passed to the execution stage so this is what the hardware organization of the fetch and execution step here the instruction fetched by patch unit is deposited in an intermediate storage buffer b1 as i told and this buffer is needed to enable the execution unit to execute the instruction while the patch unit is patching the next instruction so how it will work is first uh, this unit will fetch an instruction then it will pass that to instruction buffer 
where it will be stored in instruction buffer then it will activate the execution unit and execution unit it will take this instruction and it will execute so during this time the instruction fetch unit is going to fetch the next instruction for the execution this is how the hardware unit or the hardware organization will work here the result of execution are deposited in the destination location which is specified by the instruction here for the purpose of this discussion we assume that both the source and destination of the data operant on by the instruction are inside the block which is labeled as the execution unit i hope these two figures are clear this is sequential execution of an instruction where uh, the fetch is followed by the execution step this is what the hardware organization for the instruction execution this is fetch unit this is execution unit in between them there is the interstage unit then the result of execution will be stored in some hardware unit again or it may be stored in the execution unit itself now the computer is controlled by a clock whose period is such that the fetch and execution steps of any instruction can each be completed in one clock cycle operation of the computer proceeds as it is in uh, shown in the uh, figure three so in figure three as you can see the pipeline execution in terms of the clock cycles where each step is going to take one clock cycle here so it's like instruction fetch take one clock cycle to complete and instruction execution take one clock cycle for instruction similarly for instruction to fetch and execution take one clock cycle similarly for instruction three fetch and execution take uh, one clock cycle each so this is uh, the basic idea of instruction pipelining where each step will take a one clock cycle to perform so in the first clock cycle the fetch unit fetches an instruction i1 and stores it in buffer b1 at the end of clock cycle and in the second clock cycle the instruction fetch unit proceeds with the fetch operation for the instruction i2 meanwhile the execution unit performs the operation specified by instruction 1 so which is available to it in the buffer b1 so by the end of the second clock cycle the execution of instruction i is completed and the instruction i2 is available then instruction i2 is stored in b1 replacing i1 which is uh, no longer needed here then step 2 that is uh, execution step for second instruction is performed by the execution unit during the third clock cycle while the instruction i3 is being fetched by the fetch unit so in this manner both the fetch and execute are kept busy at all the time so if the pattern in figure 3 that is figure c can be sustained for a long time then the completion rate of instruction execution will be twice that achievable by the sequential operation which is depicted in the first figure so i'll tell how exactly this pipeline execution work so during first clock cycle the instruction is fetched and it will be stored in the buffer then at the second clock cycle the instruction is taken by the execution unit and it will start executing and at the end of second clock cycle the result of the instruction 1 will be available in the destination buffer so meanwhile once the execution of first instruction is started then the instruction 2 is fetched at the same time then it will be replaced in the buffer when the instruction 2 is executing at that time instruction 3 is fetched then it will be replaced in the buffer like this the pipeline execution perform so to summarize here the fetch and execute units they constitute a two stage pipeline in which each stage performs one step in the processing and instruction here an intermediate stage storage buffer that is b1 which is needed to hold the information being passed from one stage to next stage 
here the new information is loaded into this buffer at the end of each clock cycle the processing of an instruction need not to be divided into only two steps for example a pipeline processor may process each instruction in four steps means a pipeline processor basically it consists of four steps to process an instruction so the four steps are our four stages we can say first one is fetch which is nothing but read the instruction from the memory second step is decode which is nothing but decode the instruction and fetch the source operand then execution step which is nothing but perform the operation specified by the instruction that is execute and last step is write which is nothing but store the result of execution in the destination location so every pipeline processor it consists of these four stages or these four steps to process an instruction here the sequence of events for this case is shown in this figure that is 8.2 so in this figure as you can see a postage pipeline for an instruction execution which is divided into four steps so here you can see each instruction execution is divided into four steps that is fetch decode execute and write similarly second instruction third and fourth so every instruction execution is divided into four steps where each step takes one clock cycle to perform so in this figure as i have shown there are four instructions which are in progress at any given time so this means that four distinct hardware units are needed as this hardware organization is shown here so for this uh, postage pipeline this is what the required hardware organization so to perform four stages or to perform four steps four separate hardware units are required here that is uh, instruction fetch unit instruction decode unit instruction execution unit and uh, instruction write unit so four hardware units are needed to perform this instruction pipeline or pipeline execution so these units must be capable of performing their task simultaneously and without interfering with one another means without uh, uh, interfering means without uh, clashing with each other the information is passed from one unit to next through a storage buffer here as an instruction progress through the pipeline all the information needed by the stages downstream they must be passed along for example during the clock cycle 4 the information in the buffer is as follows here buffer b1 holds the instruction i3 which was placed by cycle 3 and is being decoded by the instruction decoding unit then buffer b2 it holds both the source operand for instruction i2 and specification of the operation to be performed so this is the information which is produced by so kindly note where exactly these buffers buffer b1 is between fetch and decode then buffer b2 is between decode and execute buffer b3 is between execute and write so these are interstage buffers b1 b2 and b3 so once again i'll repeat here buffer b1 holds instruction i3 which was fetched by cycle 3 and is being decoded by the instruction decoding unit then buffer b2 holds both the source operand for instruction i2 and specification of the operation to be performed this is the information produced by decoding hardware in cycle 3 then the buffer also holds the information needed for the right step of the instruction i2 even though it is not needed by stage execute so this information must be passed on the stage w in the following clock cycle to enable the stage to perform the required write operation here buffer b3 holds the result produced by the execution unit and the destination information for instruction i1 
this is how this hardware organization work so this is all about uh, the basic concept of uh, instruction execution and uh, the hardware organization for the post stage pipeline right so in the next slide that i'm going to discuss the role of cache memory in pipeline thank you